Welcome to Excel Zero, everyone. So, Brony of Gene Day Reviews here with the Servant Spotlight for your favorite bro, Iskander. We'll be examining his stats and his skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize him effectively and an overall grade comparing him to how he stacks up to the other 5 star servants. I also have a spotlight out for the new 4 star servant, Emia Assassin, up as well, so do check that out right after this. And now, on to Iskander's stats. Iskander has a max HP of 13,219, which is a little below average for a 5 star rider and low overall when compared to all other 5 star servants. His max attack of 11,560 is slightly better, it's average among 5 star riders and among all 5 stars overall as well. Taking a look at his skills. His first skill is Charisma Rank A, which increases the attack of all allies for 3 turns between 10-20% to 20 depending on level. His second skill is Tactics Rank B, which increases the Noble Phantasm strength of all allies for 1 turn between 9-18% and 18 depending on level. And his last skill is Conqueror of Lightning Rank EX, which increases his Buster Card effectiveness for 1 turn between 30-50% to 50 depending on level, and increases his Crit Star drop rate for 1 turn by 50%. For passives, he has Magic Resistance Rank D, which increases debuff resist by 12.5%, Riding Rank A+, which increases quick card effectiveness by 11%, and Divinity Rank C, which applies damage plus 150. Moving on to his deck and Noble Phantasm, Iskander has a balanced deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. His Noble Phantasm is Ionian Hitari which deals heavy damage to all enemies with between a 300-500% to damage modifier, depending on level, and decreases their defense for 3 turns between 10-30%, to depending on overcharge. This can be upgraded through an interlude, which will increase the damage modifier to between 400-600%, and and it adds the effect of decreasing critical hit rate for all enemies for 3 turns between 10-50%, to depending on overcharge. Taking a closer look at his cards, we can see his quick card hits 3 times, his arts hits twice, his buster hits once, and his extra hits 6 times. He has a Noble Phantasm gain rate of 0.66% before his interlude and 0.86% after his interlude. And he has a star rate of 8.80%. This equates to bad Noble Phantasm gain unless he can Brave Chain because of the low hits on his non-extra attack and slightly above average star gen if he brave chains, otherwise very low star gen. Iskander is one of those servants that looks amazing on paper, but in reality isn't as good as he seems. And that isn't to say he's bad, but judging based on his skills you would be forgiven for thinking he's some OP juggernaut of damage. And that's because all three of his skills are damage buffs. His first skill is your standard Charisma, it's slightly better than Saber's Charisma and slightly worse than Gil's, but in any case, Charisma is just a good general utility buff, and it makes a noticeable difference in your party's damage output, so it's a good skill to have. But to pile onto his buff support role, Iskander also has Tactics as his second skill, and this is the same version that Altera and Caesar have, and it's pretty strong, especially when combined with Charisma. Just taking those two skills into account, Iskander can give your entire team a near 40% damage buff to their Noble Phantasm, not bad. But the icing on the cake is he also has a unique mana burst in the form of Conqueror of Lightning. This is his only skill that isn't party wide, but it gives him a tremendous buster buff and a crit star drop rate increase as well. So that makes 3 damage buffs in one servant, meaning a Scanner's Noble Phantasm hits for a truckload of damage when compared to other AoE Noble Phantasms. All of Iskander's skills are strong, but you should max Conqueror of Lightning first since that's his strongest buff, followed by Charisma as your main team support skill, and finally Tactics because it's the weakest of the buffs. Just based off of his skills, Iskander is set up to look very powerful, and purely from a damage standpoint he is. At his release, he can outbox both Drake and Maeve on a damage per hit basis, and that's his major strength. But when it comes to riders, utility can be just as important as damage, and in Iskander's case, he lacks any versatility. His major problem comes from very poor Noble Phantasm gain and star generating. Because the hit counts on his arts and quick card are so low, he depends on his extra card to do most of his NP gain and star gen, making him inconsistent. He needs Brave Chains to be effective. This is relieved somewhat when he gets his interlude which upgrades his Noble Phantasm gain, but even then he doesn't have access to Noble Phantasm charge the way that Drake and Maeve do. 
so you'll have a very difficult time charging Iskander's Noble Phantasm. And this ties into his second major problem, his inconsistent damage. When it comes to Noble Phantasm damage, Iskander can potentially outdamage most AoE servants aside from Gil, but because of bad Noble Phantasm gain, it takes a long time between Noble Phantasms. In the same time it takes Iskander to Noble Phantasm once, Drake can get off 2-3 to three Noble Phantasms. The lack of any Noble Phantasm charge skills also means Iskander can't turn one Noble Phantasm like Drake can, making him less effective for farming, although he can still do it, just not as well. And finally, the biggest issue with Iskander is he is a damage focused buster rider in the same class as these two. Iskander may have a strong Noble Phantasm, but it's nowhere near Ozzy or Quatsukoto levels. And when it comes to AoE Noble Phantasms, there's a certain point where damage becomes less important than utility and spammability, and Iskander is way past that point. That said, Iskander can still be useful in the proper team. The best team for Iskander is a balanced buster team. He can work very well as a support buffer. He obviously won't be as great as Hans or Waver in the support role, but he can be effective while also providing the damage that those two can't to compensate. Pair Iskander with less fragile buster servants like Gil, Rama, Drake, Saber and Santa Alter, Altera, Mordred, Nobu, and Kid Gil. Also, because Iskander lacks healing and Noble Phantasm charge, supports like Tamamo, Hans, Jean, Waver, Media Lily, Mosh, Leonidas, Nero Bride, and Nightingale really help him balance out. Iskander's Bondcraft Essence is Gordian Knot. It increases the attack of all allies by 15%. And this synergizes well with his charisma and tactics, and it's a fantastic choice of craft essence if you're going to use him in a more offensive team. Other good choices for craft essence are Limited Zero, Heaven's Feel, and Halloween Princess for damage. And for a more support oriented role, give him 2030 or Maiden Leading Chaldea. And if you want to use his Noble Phantasm quicker or more often, consider Prisma Cosmos, Kaleidoscope, or March of the Saint depending on your circumstance. Overall, Iskander is a good bruiser type servant. He can deal a lot of damage and he's a good alternative buffer if you don't have a caster like Hans or Waver, or you just want a more offensive team. Outside of that though, his use is too limited. He has a hard time charging his Noble Phantasm, making it unreliable and efficient for farming, and despite the strength of his Noble Phantasm, he doesn't measure up to the top tier riders, and he has nothing else to fall back on so he gets a B- from me. I do think Drake is better simply due to the spammability of her Noble Phantasm and her really good star generating, whereas Iskander goes too hard on damage buffs and his utility suffers because of it. But if you don't have Drake, he can be a very strong servant and he's decent overall. And those are my thoughts on Iskander. In my opinion, your best bet is to use him as a hybrid offensive support alongside stronger buster servants but let me know what you think and if you rolled him in the comments below. Also, please check out the Emiya Assassin Spotlight, linked both on screen and in the description. And don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over at our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Spotlight. So we're only out. Later.